You know, many times, what I call baby Buddhism, uh, that uh, they say, this means this. This is the meaning of this particular word. This is the meaning of karma. This is the meaning of uh, the six perfections. This is the meaning of bodhisattva. When in fact, it is a, a very broad spectrum of, uh, of dynamics and understandings that bring together the, these meanings. And only when you've been practicing and discussing as we are here, and suddenly something broadens and you realize that there's more to ethics, as you were saying, more to ethics than, than you had previously thought. So this is good. This is Buddhism. Mm. And, uh, and so, and so our, our, uh, in our ordinary experience that we discover not just our own wants and needs and our own standards, our own ethics of what we will do and what we won't do, which is, I think, how most people consider it, but we are beginning to consider the needs of others and perhaps even thinking that the needs of others might even be more important than our needs. And this would bring a big new understanding when we realize, for example, someone who has a family and they realize that the needs of their family are, are so very important that there are many lives, a large family, I'm just going to say as an example, a large number of people that depend upon you uh, for their livelihood and for their support and their emotional needs, etc. And then you realize that there's no time left for you. So on one hand, we could say that this is a big complaint of people who have large families, that there's no time left for them, that they're doing and doing for others. On the other hand, the fact that they are doing and doing for others shows that they have some kind of ethical structure which truly believes that the needs of others uh, supersede their own needs. Okay? So this has to be a practical application. The problem is that many people in that situation vacillate between saying there's no time for myself, everyone's taking up their, my, my time, and saying that uh, their needs are so important. So <laughs> if you catch them on a good day, you might actually get their attention, but if they're having a bad day, they're that ethically impure being. <laughs> 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 so the difference between those two positions? What? Understanding. That they have not, that they have not really made, uh, made decisions, strong decisions about how they actually believe, what they believe. They haven't reflected on their own, on their own standards or how they would, for example, in some kind of mythical, what they call imaginary situation, how they would respond. I believe people with strong ethics have a kind of, have a kind of mental set of responses if they should, uh, for example, if uh, somebody, uh, somebody should uh, 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 want to hurt you, would you hurt them back harder? Or, or something, for example, a famous story about uh, the Zen monk who met a samurai, this had to be in Japan, like that, this uh, evil samurai on a bridge, a narrow bridge, and the samurai uh, said, uh, uh, you step aside and you let me, you back up or you step aside and you let me go through first because I'm more powerful. And uh, the monk said, no, no, I was here on the bridge first, I'm going to go across first, you know, very mildly. And uh, the samurai said, do you know who I am? I am the kind of person that could run you through with my sword without blinking an eye. And the monk said, do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. I am the kind of person who could be run through with a sword without blinking my eye. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so both, of these, both of these people uh, had certain, had certain ethical, ethical structures already in place before they got on that bridge, we don't know actually what happened, but I, I'm hoping that the monk won and everyone went peacefully on their way. But uh, these, are the, these are the decisions that we make about the positions that we hold, and uh, this is part of our ethical structure. 
when we have standards and ethics that we have that we have levels we discover levels of courage within ourselves uh, that we did not have until we examined how life affects us, what we will and won't do, how we consider our relationship to others. It's huge. No wonder the bodhisattvas practice for three countless eons, which I think is supposed to be like, you know, half a million years or something <laughs> like that. Some very, very, very long time. That ethics by nature bring clarity to our understanding. That we, uh, that when we uh, abide by our own ethics, that we are abiding within a uh, within a set of statements. Isn't that so? A set of statements about who we are, what kind of person we are, how we will respond in in various kinds of situations. How would the understandings that you have? What would, what, how would they lead to spiritual ethics? And the, the, the visual that I have is really like leading you by the hand. That how will your understandings, by what method will your understandings take you by the hand and naturally lead you into a spiritual uh, valuation of ethics?